Enrique Chavarria was a Mexican painter who produced a major body of surreal work during the last half of the 20th century. Born in 1927, he was reclusive, living with his three maiden aunts in an old mansion in Mexico City until he died in 1998. He became aware of the art of Remedios Varro and Leonora Carrington, who at that time were living in Mexico City. Although there is no record of him being close to them, or even being a visitor to their studios. He incorporated elements of their art style into his own painting, particularly adopting the pictorial language of Varro. This has led to him being unfairly seen as a mere copyist of Varro's work, and his reputation as an artist has consequently suffered. Chavarria was well read in both psychological theory and alchemy, and both of these inform his imagery. His subjects thus draw deeply on his studies, and the imagery he created usually has a coherent narrative. Thus his paintings are well thought out and structured. In this little video, I will attempt to show the narrative structure that underpins some of his paintings. Chavarria's creator of the planets is a glass blower. On the right wall, we see his furnace within which two balls of glass are being heated. These are at the end of two blowpipes. Our glass blower is in the act of blowing into a third blowpipe and fashioning the planet Saturn. Once he is finished, he will release them into the sky as he has already done with six other globes. In front of him, is a tripod formed of three twigs, each ending in a hand. At its base is the familiar yin-yang symbol of the merging of the two opposites, darkness and light. These hands support a vessel holding a flame. The tripod supports a circular top woven out of a thin material forming a tight spiral in which a set of nine planets are seen resting. This may be a kind of pattern or archetype which the glass blower is using to inform the way he creates each planet. There are nine planets in our solar system, each rotating about the central fire on the virtual table. Our creator of the planets has already fashioned seven and has the remaining two still being heated in his furnace. On the right, we note his female companion. She wears a bluish green robe with the zodiacal signs arrayed across her garment and body at the parts which they govern. Thus Aries the ram is at her head and Pisces the fish at her feet. She holds the globe of the earth with the orbiting moon in one hand and a paintbrush in the other. On a table beside her is a palette with paint. She is finishing colouring the earth and appears to be presenting it to the male creator of the planets. She could be seen as a personification of nature. On a triangular shelf in the corner is an elongated glass flask. Its top is open and two stars are shooting out and finding their place through the open window into the heavens. There we see a spiral galaxy 
and the familiar constellation of the great bear in the form of the plough. This window is flanked by two tall square tables, supported by thin living twigs bearing leaves and flowers. The table on the left has a bottle sealed with a cloth in which a crescent moon is seen with a little cloud playing around it. The table on the right has a large bellied unstoppered flask in which is a sixfold form seemingly constructed of light. In the foreground, the glass blower and planet painter's cat seems uninterested and turns away from looking at the worlds they are creating. In his painting, Magician Building a House, the magician sits on a rectangular pavement. Beside this androgynous figure, a cauldron is set on a tripod. It has been heated by a small fire and smoke emerges, filling the space above the pavement. The magician holds out a magic wand, its far tip bright yellow, possibly with fire. This has opened a rift in the sky, through which two wooden beams and a stone panel are emerging. The magician's red cloak has fourteen candles woven into its fabric. The magus points to a plan of the house drawn on a paper scroll. A roof and rectangular stone blocks are descending to form the structure. Thus the magician is building the house from the top downwards. On the far left, an owl perching on a dead tree trunk gazes at the proceedings. The psychiatrist arrives at his office within a clearing in a wood, wearing his doctor's coat and riding a monocycle whose wheel is formed from hands. His face is an owl-like mask. At the centre of the clearing is his couch. It appears to be formed from a doctor's white coat. At the headrest is a face which is likely to be a depiction of Sigmund Freud, the father of psychiatry. Upon this couch stands a strange alchemical dragon, which Shabaria has copied from a well-known early alchemical book, The Three Dreams of Nazari. This has three heads, one for each of the three alchemical principles, salt, sulphur and mercury. Its tail entwines itself around their necks. In the background are eight large, seemingly dead tree trunks. A figure hides within a rift in one of these trunks. Presumably, this is the patient, overwhelmed by his visit to the psychiatrist and trying to merge himself into the background. The trees do not bear branches, but instead support various magical sigils and alchemical symbols. These include the symbols for the planetary metals and substances such as vinegar, brimstone, antimony, glass, etc., which Shabaria appears to have taken from Rudolf Koch's Book of Signs. Other symbols seen in the dead trees include the sun and moon, the eye of Ra, the yin-yang symbol, and the Ouroboros. The animal symbols of six of the zodiacal signs also appear in this dead forest. Two winged forms appear lower down, hovering breasts and a mouth. Perhaps these correspond to the mother fixation and oral stages in Freudian psychoanalytic theory. A white unicorn emerges from the forest and gazes at the psychiatrist. In this painting, 
Shavaria seems to be deconstructing the experience of visiting a psychiatrist. The figure of the patient, hiding in the cleft of a tree trunk, is seen to be holding a paintbrush, so presumably this is the artist himself. In Shavaria's Elements Creating Man, he depicts three women standing around a table, the surface of which is an opening into an underground space with a descending staircase. Walking up the staircase and emerging from the depths is a young man in a red coat. He holds a cord bearing a loop with which he has captured a star emerging from the depths of the tomb or vault. The figure on the left has a brick tower like a rook in chess set on her head. From a door in this tower a bird is singing. She holds a transparent glassy sphere and may correspond to the element of air. The headdress of the central figure metamorphoses into a candle around which a serpent entwines itself somewhat like the image of Fanes in classical mythology. Fanes was the first-born god of light who emerged from emptiness or a watery abyss to give birth to the universe. The central female figure holds a little flask with a clear liquid and a tiny wine glass. Thus she may correspond to the element of water. On the right, a female figure has a fire burning upon her head. It heats a distillation retort. She is playing a piano keyboard, whose keys have become detached and float before her. These three female figures appear to be invoking the emergence of man from the depths of the earth. The Inn of the Great Bear Here we see depicted the well-known constellation of Ursa Major, the Great Bear or Plough, whose tail of stars is seen on the left above the staircase. The square part of the constellation is envisaged by Shavaria as an inn. Various people are seen travelling to this inn. One on the lower left rides a flying bicycle, while another chooses the more conventional staircase. A blue-bodied figure sits in a flying wooden box propelled by Leonardo da Vinci-style helicopter blades and steered by wings. A fourth figure in a long crimson dress is held aloft by two doves. In the inn is set a long table around which four guests are seated. They are being served by three waiters. The one at the rear has blue bands around his body and he holds a plate with a roast chicken. His head is a goldfish bowl in which a red fish is swimming. We see that he has already placed similar dishes onto the table. Two other servants appear, one holding a candlestick with a red heart at its centre to illuminate the table. On the right, a servant in a red dress holds out a plate bearing a strawberry-like fruit. Her head is a radiant black sun. From inside her dress, a man's hand comes out from a window and reaches for a fish held by a small man in an overcoat. Beside her is a large bird with the face of an old man. It wears a green helmet on which is a bright crescent moon. It holds a long pole in its talons, whose tip is a luminous yellow star. 
At the head of the table sits an owl, its eyes formed from two human heads, possibly male and female. Two other bird-like creatures are seated at the table. They have a dark aspect. At the right front, we see a woman in a green dress. On her head is a white bird, and her hair piles up into a tower on which an inverted male head appears. At the foot of the table, a strange double-bodied animal appears. From the mouth and its back, flames emerge, while the two heads at either end have horns which hold little glass flasks. On the right wall is a sconce formed with the head of a masked Sigmund Freud and bearing four candles.